Hi guys, uh, this what you see is the armature of a three-phase brushless motor, BLDC motor, okay? And today I'm going to convert it into a single-phase AC generator. So this is the copper wire that I'm going to use for the rewinding process, and its size, as you can see, is 0.57 mm, okay? So the first step is to take one end of the wire and place it in one of the holes. Okay, done like this. And after that, take any of the pole for starting the winding process. And like I'm going to take this one. Okay, so giving it one turn and second. And I'm going to fill it and also count the number of turns that I'm giving to figure out uh, the maximum number of turns that can be given to one pole for maximum voltage generation. So guys, I have given it 25 turns on this pole and seems like that this one is full and I have to shift to the second pole, the one next to it, okay? Okay, so doing that, 25 turns on each pole, that's what I want to say. Now guys, initially we were going in the clockwise direction, okay? But after completing two poles, you have to go counterclockwise for the next two poles, okay? One turn, two turns, three turns and same 25 number of turns per pole. Two clockwise, two anti-clockwise, two clockwise, then again two anti-clockwise. This way we have to fill up the armature completely with copper coil. So guys, after completing 25 turns on the third pole, you have to start it the same way you started this one, the anti-clockwise as I said before. One, one turn, second turn, and third turn, 25. So guys, after completing the fourth pole, again you have to go in clockwise and 25 turns. One, two three and so on now guys after you have completed the winding per pole you will be getting only two wires out of the complete armature and to these two wires extension cables will be connected which i'm going to use these two black ones and the output is going to be single phase ac so what we have to do is solder these two wires uh, to this and this terminal and uh, place it back in this field magnet case and the bearing holder, okay? Guys, this is the magnetic field okay you see there is one bearing here and the other one is on this side so we have to place it like this the back is all rusty but still it works smooth you see although you see that the uh, this bearing is coming out I will have to place it properly so for that I'm going to use this 11 mm yeah now it is perfect and smooth i think i will have to open these two so placing the shrink tube to prevent any possible short circuit and if you want to buy it i have this whole pack of it if you want to buy it link will be provided in the description you can check it out okay now simply move it like this and we have these two final wires coming out from it and also one of the slots from which we can take this wire out and this one also nice well guys it's time to do the multimeter testing so the good thing is that we have only two wires coming out of the armature let's see okay you see around 4 volts I'm doing here, 3.9, 4.5, 4.8, 5.6 volts, 5.8, 5.6, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.
so yeah almost 6 volts from the hand rotation single phase AC here you can see that I have pointed the meter to the frequency measurement mode Hertz let's see what's the frequency that I'm getting here and obviously it is not going to be constant because of the change in speed see 50 Hertz 43 and then 12 55 yeah 59 the more the rpm more is the frequency but yes we can manage it by like fixing the speed of rotation of this motor single phase generator it's time to do forced rotation test to see how much power it can generate oh so 6 volts is the max I could generate this way well guys I also have this 2600 rpm drill machine let's see if this one works better okay yeah we are getting around 15 volts here here what I have is a 12 volts 55 watts car headlamp bulb so I'm going to use this one well guys the bulb has been successfully connected over here and now I'm going to tighten up the chuck okay go you see how beautifully it is glowing the bulb Turning off the camera lights. Now let's see. Pretty cool, right? And guys, this is a 12 volts to 220 volts transformer, 230 volts. Okay, so I'm going to use this to step up the single phase AC output voltage from this generator to 220 volts so that I can also run 220 volts appliances. So simple enough. The blue terminals are the sorry, these are the high current, uh, high voltage windings. So I will have to connect it this way. Okay, done. So guys, I have pointed the meter towards AC voltage measurement mode. Let's see how much voltage I can generate with this way. Okay, go. Wow, it was almost 270 volts AC. Also guys, this what you see is a 220 volts in candescent bulb. Okay. So I'm going to try this one with this. Okay, so let's see if it can glow this one. Wow! <laughs> that was pretty cool. Let's turn off the lights. Wow! Today I'm going to teach you the most efficient way to produce hydrogen oxygen flame at home. So guys, we are going to need a tape. Okay. After completing the taping process comes the second part, which is electrical isolation. Okay. So this is the part. This is one of the parts to be specific. Done. Now comes the isolation, electrical isolation of this. So the electrical isolation has completed now comes the head part okay now i've taken a tighter belt to further prevent the air from escaping from the sides okay now guys on this pressure cooker cover i have also placed black insulation tape okay now why i have done that you will understand it later in the video and uh, here as you can see the rubber belt that is also placed here and this part is done now comes our 12 volts ups battery this needs to be recovered and needs a lot of charging i haven't used it i haven't charged it for almost eight or nine months okay so guys it's time to open all the knobs to see about the water level and then start the recharging process Well guys here I'm using a rain water okay and there are a few slots in which there is very less water okay one second yeah you see no water in this one this one but water is present in this one this one and again no water in this one and this one so I will have to fill that out
So guys, here what you see is a triangular metallic piece. Okay, so I need it for uh, the conduction of electricity and this pin for connecting to one of the terminals of the UPS battery. Okay, so I am going to choose uh, the negative terminal of the battery. Okay, this one is the negative terminal. So I've connected to the negative and it is going to come below the battery like battery is going to reside on it. So guys, after doing the connections, you are going to need one more pin for the positive terminal, but we will connect that later. So let's remove the wooden board, not needed anymore. And now we need is the pressure cooker itself. This is also not needed. So it's simple enough. Place the metal sheet, you see this metal piece below it and keep the battery. Yeah, battery is in place. And guys, I have placed this metal sheet this way because I need the negative of the battery, you see, to get in contact electrically with this part of the cooker, okay? And this side is still open, okay? Let's do the connection for this one. So guys, this is the cooker cap and uh, uh, now what you have to do is use some sieving oil, sieving machine oil and place it on the belt. This further prevents the air from leaking, okay? Yeah, done. So with that being done comes the part of placing this wire. Oh, sorry, the oil is getting leaked. So guys, I will quickly show you because the oil starts leaking up. I have placed the wire over here and uh, now what I have to do is connect this terminal to the positive terminal of the battery, okay? And uh, this is a little tricky because uh, the negative has been connected to this part and positive has been connected to this part. And for that reason, I placed this insulation tape over here and here to prevent any short circuit. I am electrically isolating this pressure cooker piece and this piece, okay? So oh, that's why I've also placed tape over here and here, just a precaution. And after that, connect it like this. Yeah, this has connected successfully. Now what we can see is this part of the pressure cooker is the negative. Okay, and this part, the head part is the positive. Okay, now a little bit careful. Okay, so this is completely logged. Now guys, to make sure that there is no short circuit condition, what I'm going to do is measure the voltage. So I've pointed it to 12 volts DC mode and now I'm going to touch these pins to the cooker to see the battery voltage. Here as you can see that it is showing the full voltage indicating that there is no short circuit occurrence. So guys, to the nozzle as you can see, I have connected a pipe and this is the end exit point. And uh, the point is to collect the gas in this balloon. So taking the balloon and placing it like this and using a plastic rope well you can use whatever you want uh, at least uh, that is what I am doing to tighten, uh, tighten up the balloon okay uh, it is very important because the pressure might just blow it away yeah. done now it's time to charge the battery remember that this side is positive and this is negative as I told you before the connection part and guys, uh, 15 volts, 3 amperes charger is what I'm going to use here. You can see output 15V, 3A and input of 100 to 240 volts. Okay, laptop charger. And these are the two terminals. White one is positive and black one is negative. Little rusty because I've been using it on uh, like a sulfuric acid. So it has corroded it but still works. Now guys, there is a place over here, a little grove. I'm going to connect the negative to that point. You see, connected successfully now the positive is left the top head is positive so i'm going to connect the positive to the top head okay done at present the connection seems fine everything seems fine you can see that uh, there is a little inflation of hydrogen gas even when it is not charging it still produces hydrogen oxygen gas but yes the truth is that we need a lot more than that okay so here i'm going to turn on the switch and you should see some change you can see that the balloon is inflating little by little and a bit more than before. Very soon it is going to enter the recovery mode. Current is a little more than before. It is 0.23. A lot more current is needed for fast filling of balloon with air. Although you can see that it is inflating but taking a lot of time. Well guys, after a time period of about half an hour or uh, 45 minutes, this balloon inflated like this as you can see. Here I have also made this nozzle for the flame. So let's carefully take it out from there and place it over here and then see how good the flame is.
Well, guys, the bad news is that the balloon burst out while placing this at the balloon's opening. So I think I will have to do this again with another balloon. Well, guys, it took around 20 more minutes and you can see that it is inflated this much. I think I should continue with the experiment before I fill it up completely and then it blasts. Yeah, now it seems fine. Whoa, you see? <laughs> Pretty good flame. You see, good flame. Whoa, what is this? You see? It is like it is traveling. So this what you see is a flyback transformer from an old CRT TV. You see I have given additional center tap primary with thick copper coils and this one is the final high voltage wire output and this is the other terminal of the high voltage winding. So as we did in the UPS transformer inverter circuit exactly the same we are going to do here. Done. Center tap is still open which will be our positive input from the battery okay and black is the same negative the output voltage is going to vary from 10,000 to 50,000 max volts now guys this blue wire is going to be our positive wire and this positive wire will be connected to the center tap point as in my previous videos done so that was simple now comes the connection of the negative terminal to this battery terminal and the circuit should start working pretty good arc wow So guys, there's one change that I'm going to do here. You see this 12 volts battery. I'm going to replace it with this 14 volts power supply, 12 to 14 volts, because I don't want to waste the battery power unnecessarily. Plus the second thing is I'm going to change the transformer. I'm going to switch from this transformer to my old UPS transformer. Okay. Now guys, I've connected this transformer to the circuit and there's one more change that I've done here. You see that I have connected this black jumper cable to the high voltage terminal and this blue terminal is empty and white terminal is connected to this side okay so guys it's time to start the experiment just make your choice which one is going to melt the drill bit or the iron nail okay make your choice and let me know who was right in the comments whoa whoa Let's turn on the light. You see it is so bright. Oh wow. I've never seen anything like this. Something is melting here. Weird sound. Whoa, the nail melted red hot. <laughs> Ah, that was a super cool experiment guys that's the nail it had a pointy end initially but now that is flattened and there is a little melting at the tip of the drill bit also let's increase the gap wow the ball is so big
You see, it is so bright. Okay, so guys, turning the circuit off and let's do the measurement. Getting ready. Okay, go. Whoa, 400 degrees. <laughs> okay, so guys, turning off the circuit and touching it to the heat sink. Okay, go. Oh, it was 478 degrees. Now guys, we know that uh, plasma temperature ranges to around 6000 degrees centigrade. And you see that it melted the tips of the iron nails. And the melting point of iron is around 1500 degrees centigrade. You see, the tips completely melted. And you see this, this metal ball. This is one of the melted pieces. So you see that the temperature must be around 3000 degrees centigrade or like uh, at least 2000 degrees centigrade. Plasma temperature itself is around 6000 degrees, okay? But the temperature induced from plasma to the iron nails was enough to melt it. 